coming to you from BBC World News. Now, as COVID restrictions have lifted, there's been the very welcome return to the classroom for children right around the world. However, kickstarting their stalled learning does not necessarily mean all children are receiving the best quality education. Now, this is a global problem, but the worst affected are those in low and middle income countries. This issue of learning poverty was addressed at a special meeting of the United Nations in New York. The event, called the Transforming Education Summit, also aimed to elevate education as a key political issue. Here's Catherine Russell from the UN's children charity, UNICEF. It's absolutely clear that children, especially the most marginalized children, that's girls, that's children with disabilities, children living in humanitarian crises, are facing a true crisis in education. And, you know, we say crisis so much around here that sometimes you lose track of it, but this is a crisis. Uh, we will work to ensure that all children learn the basics, that they can read, that they can do their numbers, they can continue to learn. And we will support their mental health and their digital inclusion, which are absolutely critical. We need to support teachers, principals, parents, and we need to monitor and, pro monitor and measure our progress How's the continent of Africa doing? Well, let's discuss this further with Clement Uwajineza, who is in Kigali in Rwanda and is also the Africa director of the education charity New Globe. He's also worked with the Rwandan government to improve the education system in the country. Thank you for joining us here on BBC News. Um, my first question is, we heard Catherine Russell there say it's a crisis. Um, just how serious is it? Yes, uh, Lucrezia, thank you for having me to discuss this uh, worrying matter. We expect a 10-year-old to be reading and understanding the simple written text. And when majority of 10-year-old can't read and understand written text, then it's worrying. Globally, in low- and middle-income countries, 70% of 10-year-olds can't read and understand written text, simple written text. In Africa, that number is at 90%. So it's a worrying state, and that's indeed a crisis that needs to be reverted. Okay. Um, Clement, I wonder if I could just go back, actually. Um, for people who don't quite get it, I think you touched on it, the fact that um, a child can't read some text. Just define very quickly what we mean by learning poverty. Yes, learning poverty is a measure by the World Bank that uh, looks at the number of children at 10 years old who can't read and understand simple written text. And in sub-Saharan Africa, this number is at 90% of 10 year olds who can't read and understand simple text. And that's learning poverty. And, the, and these are children who are going to school, so you could almost describe it as a hidden, a hidden crisis why aren't they learning? Why aren't they being taught the right things? And, you know, why aren't they coming away with the ability to read? Yes, Lucrezia, you're right. The vast majority of children are in schools, and this is thanks to the efforts by all governments in Africa and uh, uh, globally to uh, achieve universal enrollment in basic education. Um, however, despite the investment in infrastructure and teachers and everything that led us to uh, this universal enrollment, learning isn't happening in schools. And unfortunately, one of the other biggest weaknesses in our education systems is the lack of considerable or sufficient data for us to pinpoint exactly and precisely to the why. However, some initiative that uh, proved to be reversing this learning poverty uh, are showing some of the elements that lead to improved learning in schools. Okay, well, Those you, are more than, yeah. I mean, you work with a program called uh, Transformative, uh, the Transformative Program in Rwanda. How do you transform that? And what are the minimum standards that need to be set in order to achieve global competitiveness? Yes. Um, one, our focus, is, uh, our focus is really on accelerating learning gains in schools, in public schools in Rwanda. And we do this uh, around three, four, uh, three key pillars. 
One is improvement of school management and school professionalism, which leads to better attendance of teachers. Uh, second one is supporting and equipping teachers with high quality lesson guides that are delivered through technology. The same technology then is used to also improve uh, tracking of uh, school uh, attendance and time at task that each pupil spends uh, learning. And then lastly, this um, technology generates enough data and combined with cons consistent measurement of learning outcomes, we can guide government and support it to take uh, good policies to accelerate the learning gains in public primary schools. And, and I suppose for governments, the key takeaway from this is that it costs. I saw that UNICEF have put a price tag on this, $17 trillion in lost earnings over a lifetime. Combine that with the acceptance that girls often suffer more. Um, how, how urgent is this to be addressed? Uh, this is urgent. If I come back to that measurement that 90% of 10-year-old can't read, when you can't read a 10-year-old, usually that's the age you actually use your reading ability to start learning and expand to the world. So if this hasn't happened for 90% of the 10-year-olds, those are almost a lost generation. There is urgency to reverse this and uh, accelerate the deployment of proven methods to reverse and, and lead towards learning gains. Okay. Uh, Clemente Uwajeneza, thank you very much. Joining us there from Rwanda. Thank you. Thank you. Yes, sir.